Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to another of our training session. Uh, today we're going to be going over the series, the Anzo Strategy Class. Okay, so usually this is a bi-monthly um, class where I have I hold this class twice in a month, uh, sometimes once. Uh, where basically the whole idea behind this class is to show traders, is to basically um, show you how some sort of system, some sort of strategy, or some sort of training with regards to helping you improve yourself as a trader. Okay, so for, for today's session, we're going to be talking about something uh, something quite powerful, which is confluence. I'll be explaining a bit what confluence is. And, you know, basically, there's, there's, there's no limits to how you can apply this, right? If you're a trader, you can find a way to incorporate this into your system. If you're a newbie, you want to learn to add this into your system as you go after dates uh, forward, okay? So um, just a quick one. Remember that uh, we would, you know, basically this training the, the all the content shown in these materials are for educational purposes. Uh, trading carries a high level of risk, so you want to ensure that you obviously um, master, uh, learn the system, uh, make sure you have a good idea behind trading and trade with money you can afford to lose. Okay, so those, that's just for the disclaimer part of it. Okay, so um, just as I know some of you here are are basically a beginner, you're new to trading. Um, so you're trying to get your hands into the system and trying to get find a way to get profitability. While some of you who have started trading, so you've either, you know, you've been learning for some um, some time. So you've probably been learning to trade for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, maybe a year or thereabouts. And uh, you, you know, you you understand that you can make money in the market, but you're still struggling with profitability. You know, um, it's 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 a norm. I'll show you something that'll probably help you in a bit. Uh, as a trader to take your to your to take your training to the next level okay so um the Anzo training hub is a, is an online course right an online classroom uh, designed for clients of Anzo capital you can assess this course obviously free of charge all that's required for you to do is to fund your account so i'm just going to begin with just roll through some of the courses um some of the different segments of the courses so as you can see here we have the beginner class so this Anzo online forex training hub is a classroom section, um, detailed classroom section of training courses to help you, especially for people who are new to trading, right? So you're brand new, you don't really understand what Forex is about, you're trying to, um, you know, you, or you've learned, you don't really get it, uh, you want a structured way of learning how to trade from in a systematic manner that you can then implement, um, this is a good place to start. So as you can see now, each of these course modules, so for instance, this side says the introductory section, right? Introductory section, um, there's also, because let me go back, each of the introductory section contains videos, right? So each each of the classes, so for instance, introduction to the Forex markets, you can see there's a video you can watch, um, uh, what you call it, why choose Anzo Capital, there's a video there. So every single thing about trading, there are some quizzes there, right? So you can start from the very beginning and walk your way up. Right, so you're working your way up, understanding as you go, you know, um, each step incrementally. This would help you to not skip anything. So basically, it will help you to really, really understand and build yourself, develop yourself into the type of trader that you are looking to be. So remember, it's very, very important that you know when it comes to trading, it is an individual risk. You need to have that at the back of your mind. But when it comes to trading the forex market, it is an individual risk. So you need, you really, really, really need to make, uh, to be, to evolve into the type of trader that you want to be. The reason I'm emphasizing this point is most times people see, you know, they go to social media, they see, uh, they they see uh people saying, Oh, I've just bought this Lamborghini, I just bought this new Bugatti, I just, you know, bought this new iPhone or this new Rolex watch. It's all from trading. And you know, they're like, this is what I want to be, and I want to get there now. Now, the truth is trading, first of all, it's um, you know, it's a complex, uh, complex game that once you understand becomes quite easy. Okay. So basically, having a structured course or having a structured system to help you will go a long way in helping you become a better trader. Now, this is not only for newbies. If you're if you're an intermediate trader, you're struggling with profitability, you can also take advantage of the courses we have. So, for instance, there's the Anzo Advanced Training Hub, where in this particular um in this particular classroom, you have more advanced concepts that would enable you, you know, you, you, you've gone past understanding what PIPS is, you understand Forex, you're still struggling for profitability. But then you can jump in here and then you can begin to take yourself to the next level. So you can see how to build a trading plan, all of the um or some of the 
strategy classes I have, like this one we're having now, the recording would also be included in this class so you can rewatch it much later. And then let's say you're in an advanced trade that you're, you're doing very well for yourself. Uh, you're just trying to refine your edge and get yourself even further. Uh, or maybe you are somebody who likes uh, the concept of building for extra bots. I also have, uh, basically we also have a classroom with regards to building your own forex robot how you can build your own forex robots from scratch without actually having to code so you see that we have all of it everything covered for you everything um you know all sections of it covered uh for you and you can take advantage of it all you just need to do is remember all the classes are free of charge you just need to fund your account and then to be able to assess the classes so on the Forex Robots classroom, for instance, you can see that, um, you know, I start walking you through what are Forex Robots, how you can build your Forex Robots, the platform we use to build Forex Robots. But one also very interesting thing is for every bot that we build on class, I also send you the link to download the bot for testing purposes. So remember, it's not for you to trade. You can obviously use that if you want to, but it's just for testing to see it for yourself. OK, so now that's enough about the Anzo course and why you should take advantage of it. I'm sure it's something that irrespective of the type of trader you are, you can see that there is value in it. Okay, so let's jump straight into the topic for discussion today, which is confluence. So today, we, like I mentioned, we're going to be looking at the power of confluence. Now, the question then is, what is confluence? At least, what is confluence in the context of trading? Well, confluence, based, based, uh, basically, the way I'm, uh, from my mindset, the way I'm thinking about it, the way I'm trying to explain it to you, is looking for confirmation, multiple confirmation. So for instance, Imagine that you're trying to, you know, you're a guy or you're a girl and you're looking for a partner, right? You're trying to find yourself a suitable marriage mate. Now, I I very much believe that on your list, either your mental list or your written list, you have criteria, things to watch for, right? Now, those criteria might look like, oh, he has to, you know, he needs to be God-fearing. Obviously, you needs to be, well, he needs to be, um, if you're a girl and you're looking for a marriage partner, you're like, okay, he needs to be, uh, you know, he needs to be um financially stable enough to take care of me. He needs to be this. Then you might start having other things like, oh, he needs to be tall, he needs to be dark. Now, irrespective of all of your different criteria, some of them would have higher precedence than others, right? So what, what that means is, you know, you might have a hundred, a list of hundred um items that you need to check, right? However, out of those 100, only three or four of them are actually very important. The others are nice to have, but you know, if you don't have them, it's not the end of the world. Now, when it comes to confluence um, in trading, you don't want to make it as complex as that. So you don't want to have a 100 um, confluence checkbox that you need to um, see before you pick a trade, because that would just cause leads to another problem, which is what we call analysis paralysis. Rather, what you want to have is a set of rules, a set of uh, matching, uh, a set of things that you want to see before you decide to buy, a set of things that you want to see before you decide to sell. Now, I'm going, like I said, I'm going to give you a couple of examples, right? Just maybe one or two examples of different types of confluence. I'm going to show you confluence using price action only, and I'm going to show you confluence using indicators, right? Now, and then you can also build it into confluence using indicators slash price action. You want to see the stars align basically before you pull the trigger. Now you ask yourself, what is the importance of that? Why don't I just get in, into the market and jump into a trade? Well, you need to understand this. 95% or less than 90% of traders lose money or 90% of traders don't make money. Now, usually, yeah, we are arrogant by default. So when we think about our numbers, we believe, oh, it's not my portion or, you know, I'm different. I'm, you know, yeah, 90% of people lose money, but I'm not part of the 90%. And then um, you jump headlong, believing, you know, either luck or favor or God is on your side. Well, let me, let me help you understand a better reality. When it comes to trading, well, God doesn't play that. When it comes to trading, Look, my might get you some wins here or there, but it cannot make you profitable, right? You can't be profitable based on luck. So for instance, you wake up in the morning and you look at the charts and your mind tells you buy and you just buy. Um, you know, you can do that once in a while. You can do that a couple of times and be right. Uh, well, you can you see that in the long run, you're going to lose as a trader because that doesn't really make any sense. So 
basically what you're trying to do is build a system for yourself that would enable you become a profitable trader. So your, your goal is to step away from the 90% of losing traders and put yourself in the backs of the 10% uh, or 5% of top of traders who are consistently profitable. And just because a trader is consistently profitable doesn't mean that they don't make losses. What it means is that they make, you know, over, so for instance, like, like you can have a, out of a 12 months year, you can have two or three months where you you know you you have a negative um, equity. So, for instance, um, but but obviously those negative equity cannot be the fact that you blew all the accounts. It can be that okay, so you're averaging around ten percent or five percent or you know over twenty percent, depending on what your account size is. On the average, that's what you're doing a month. But one or two months, you might have a negative two percent, a negative three percent, even a negative five percent. You're still considered in my books. A profitable trader now so having a system that you can follow is the only way it's kind of one of the only way that you can get to that point as a trader where you are finding consistency so consistency here is the watch word consistency is the holy grail to trading okay so um now now when it comes to that confluence helps you a lot so let's let's talk let's go into some chats and enough talking so like i mentioned i'm going to show you two examples one would be finding um, using and um, looking for confluences using price action alone another will be looking for confluences using a couple of indicators now remember you can you need to take everything i say and if you like it so for instance that you you like a specific concept that i just talked about you want to back test it get confident in it before you jump into it Otherwise, you can take the concept and apply it to your already developed trading system. This is the way to go if you're already, you know, you're, 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 you're getting in there where you're, you're, you're making some gains, but you're, you know, you're, you're up and down the place. Okay. So like I mentioned, confluence is key. So confluence is saying, well, let's say we're looking at this market. You're looking at the market, right? Uh, so let me just move this away uh, like this. So let's say we're looking at the market and we've said to ourselves, this market is bullish, right? So a market is bullish and we see market is, we, we know a bullish market because we see it's making uh, because, uh, resultantly uh, higher highs and higher lows, right? And we say, okay, this bullish market, I want to uh, be a buyer in the market, right? And so it is here at this current arrow here. Now you're telling yourself, I want to be a buyer in this market. However, just because this price is bullish doesn't mean that buying at anywhere will make you money so for instance this market now where price is currently is it bullish just quickly type in the chat box is this a bullish market right where, I'm, I'm looking um surprises this is the chat so you follow the um uh, and this is where price currently is will you say this is a bullish market right this would you say it is a bullish market quickly quickly uh <laughs> let's see your responses before i push on Okay, so the, uh, yes, give up sis. Yes, uh, yeah, it's so the yes, yes, yes. So basically, uh, everybody agrees this is a bullish market, right? And it is, that means it's a good market to buy. Now, what I need you to understand when it comes to bullish and bearishness is think of it like currents, right? Think of it like water currents, right? So let's say a bullish market is one where the where the current is flowing forward, right? It's flowing in this direction, this direction, like this. So like this. However, a bearish market is one where the market is flowing in this direction. Now, there's no right or wrong direction because we are traders, right? We can make money whether the market is going forward or whether the market is pushing backward. It doesn't really matter. Uh, however, whether you make money in the market depends on what direction you're swimming towards. So if the market is bullish, that means the market is going in this direction, right? And you are swimming in this direction, right? you are most likely going to find it easier. You're going to find more joy doing so. However, if the market is bearish, that means flowing in this direction and, you, and you're swimming against it, well, you're going to struggle because obviously the market or the river current is much stronger than you. So in the same way, just like everybody said, oh yeah, Mr. Obina, this market is bullish and everybody's correct. However, just because this market is bullish doesn't mean that we this place is a good place to buy. Now, if you have a system, there are some, you know, basically I have systems where I trade market voucher over extended like this, but normally that doesn't, just because the market is bullish doesn't mean that this market, this place is a good place to look for buying opportunity. 
right? And it also doesn't mean that because the market is overextended, it's possibly a good place to look for sell opportunity. Well, I'll leave that for a different class. So imagine this market being bullish and you, you know, you decide to buy at this place, right? Now, you're right about direction in the fact that, well, price is possibly still wanting to go up. However, after you've placed your trade and you buy, let's say the market, what most likely might happen is the market begins to come back down. Now, this whole move here is uh, it's enough to give you huge losses. If you don't use stop losses, blow your account entirely. So the market can eventually do this and then begin to move up. Now, you bought here, right? Um, and yeah, you are right about direction, but you made no money. So being right about direction is not, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean you're a great trader. It's, uh, make, it's about taking your fair share from the market. That means anything at, at all when it comes to trading in the financial market. Okay, so basically, uh, you get the idea. So what we're saying now is, yes, we've identified the direction of the market. It's bullish. We want to be a buyer in the market. However, I'd like to do so when certain things align, confluence. This is where confluence comes in. So when this is met and that is met and that is met, then I'll look to trade. So now let's say, let's take this same market, for instance, right? So somebody says, well, this market is bullish and I want to be a buyer, but this is where price currently is. Well, I don't want to trade here. My trading system means that, yes, I'm looking to trade the range. So this is the range here. So from lower low, so, sorry, from lower high, so higher low to higher high, higher low to higher high, right? Higher low to higher high. So let's say you say, okay, well, price has made a new break of structure. It has made a new higher high. I would like to buy this market, but I would like to see price at least pull back, retrace into, let's say, the 61.8, um, between the 61.8 Fibonacci area to zero, right? To 100. So uh, some of you, you already understand what Fibonacci is. You understand it. So for those of you who don't remember, you can take advantage of the classes, the beginner classes. You see there are some trainings there on Fibonacci and uh, basically indicators. So basically the Fibonacci retracement is, uh, it just measures the pullback length. So for instance, this market begins to pull back because we understand that the market doesn't move up in a straight line. If it's going up, it usually pulls back to gather momentum and then continue going up. So this pull back, it can either be like this, it can be like this, it can even be like this, right? So the, sometimes the pullbacks are shallow, sometimes they are deeper, and sometimes they are even deeper, sometimes slightly below the previous one and then continue going up. So now let's say you say, first thing is first. I want to give myself the best shots. I would only look for buying opportunities around the 61.8 Fibonacci level to 100, that's the low here. So if price were to come back within this area, then I would look for buying opportunities. So note what we are doing. What we are doing is we are filtering out trades. We are, it's helping us filter out trades that we might not even, you know, it will help us filter. Sometimes it will not give us trades to take because we are waiting for our confluence to be met. So far, I hope everybody's following. I hope you guys are following me so far, okay? Now, let's say based on our rules, we decide, well, I'm going to trade the 618, right, to the, to the 100 feet level. So if I would only look for buying opportunity, if price in a bullish market retrace to one of these levels on that market, okay? So that is fine. Now, let's say price now does something like this and continue to go up, right? You, would, you probably might not get involved in this trade, at least based on this system, based on this rule. You might not get involved in the trade, but that's not the end of the world because remember, opportunities need to finish for the market, right? So if you miss one opportunity, don't go it in your head. You wait for the next one because this rules is what will keep you out of useless markets, what to keep you out of losses over and over again because the market is always moving and you cannot trade everything. Now, this is a very important point. You can write it down if you wish. Is your goal is not to, you know, is not to make all the money in the market. Your goal is to take your edge out of it. Right. So let's say you get involved in the market based on your system. The market continues to move. You've taken out your trading profits and you're like, you've taken out your 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 your, your position because of your rules, and the market continues to go. And you're like, well, I shouldn't have even used, you know, I shouldn't have closed it. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. Well. You cannot make all the money in the markets. And if you try, 
chances that you're going to lose all the money you have in it. So just stick your edge and go away from the market. Sometimes there are no opportunities you walk away from the markets. Okay, so having this set of rules and having confluences to match would help. Now let's take all these gibberish or these jargons that we drew and let's apply this concept to our chart. So we're going to, in the first place, we're going to use um, the indicator. Um, basically, let's 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 see if we can use a couple of indicators. Now, mind you, um, this is like I'm just doing this live as we go on the fly. I've not done any run test of. of basically of this, because I want you to see what it feels like in real building a view system for yourself. Okay. So one of the, one of the, for, for both of the strat, for both of the systems, whether is using price action, uh, price action as confirmation or using indicators, what you note, one of the constants is the fact that we are going to follow this in line with market structure. Market structure is the key, meaning in a bullish market, we're only looking for buying opportunities and in the bearish market, we're only looking for selling opportunities, right? And we know those markets, so we know a bullish market. So let me, let me show you here. So for instance, just looking at this chat on our screen, from this period here to this period here, the market has gone through um, two phases of bullish of bullishness of bearishness and bullishness. So from within this phase here, the market was bearish, and then looking at current price action, the market is looking uh, bullish. Okay, so simply, uh, simply put, uh, looking at this in this area here, where the market is showing bearishness, all we'll be looking for are selling opportunity. And then in this area here, where we are seeing, um, obviously, we are seeing. Um, Bullish, net, bullish markets, all we'll be looking for is buying opportunity. Now, this is a daily chart. So depending on the time frame you're looking at and the time frame you're trading, you know, you make that assumption for yourself. Now, just looking at this. So for instance, this market was bullish, right? Making higher highs and higher lows. And then it broke bearish here. From this point, price started making lower lows and lower highs. Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, and lower highs and lower lows. And then at this point here, price made a higher high. So that was the first sign of bullishness coming in. And then it confirmed it by making another break upward. So from this point here, the market shifted from being bullish to being bearish, right? So from being bullish to being bearish. Now let's take our mind back to this first sign of bearishness here, okay? So we're going to use our Fibonacci rule. So before we begin to look for confirmation to buy or sell, right? Um, we want to see the retracement just like you spoke about. Okay, so um, we had a break of structure here. This is where we have the bullish bearish break of structure here. And then it came from here. So this is the high that caused this low here. So we ask ourselves, we take our Fibonacci tool and go, well, Okay, let me, I think this will be much better if I do the replay too. So let's uh, replay. Oh, okay, I'm not logged into my account. Uh, uh, okay, let, nonetheless, I'll, I'll do it nonetheless. So let's, so this is going to be, let me see if I can, let's just draw a circle. Yeah. So this is the high, right? Uh, change the color to what? That costs this low. So we had that high to that low. This color is not very, yeah. Okay, so that is the high that formed the low. Okay, so we ask ourselves, from this high to this low, what did we, what, based on what we just discussed now, we said, let's pull out our Fibonacci. Now this is a daily chart. So uh, let's pull out our Fibonacci, draw our Fibonacci um, two like so, and go. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. So let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom in just a little bit. Hope you guys can see my screen. This is let me extend this right. Okay, now I know there are lots of colors here, but just uh, I'm not logged into my own account, so it's it's tricky. Um, now so we just first of all we've identified market direction. We liked we've seen okay this market is now looking bearish. The price has made a new structural leg, and we're going to pull out our Fibonacci, draw our levels. Now, we said we are only going to look for buying opportunities. The first sign to look for buying opportunity is if price is as retraced into the 61.8 or higher, right? So 61.8 or higher is the area we look for the opportunity to get into a trade. Now, we ask ourselves, so price went from point A to point B, and then from point B, as pulled back to point C. So at this point here, let me see. So at this point here, where price, so this is this, 
I hope you guys can just quickly reply. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. And you know, like it's it's easy for, like you can easily see what I'm doing, right? Because all of these lines can be quite hard sometimes. Okay, okay, good. Um so so yeah, now we said we'll wait for Christ to pull back, make the retracement, and if he does, we will now look to get involved in the trade. So Christ has uh pulled back. Right, it has made the retracement that we're that we're looking for. This is this area here is it taps into the sixty one point eight. Now, once that happened, we ask ourselves, okay, well, what's next, right? What what's next for us, right? Now, remember, for this particular one, we want to use. We don't want to just say, oh, you're looking for your husband. Once he has money, that's all, right? He can might has money and he might be a jerk, right? He might, you know, he might be woman Peter or she might she might be beautiful and she might not even know how to take care of the home so you need some sort of multiple uh, at least um criteria to vet right now once the price has gotten into uh what you call it has gotten into the area in this particular case the 618 we can now add a different confluence I'm going to just add another indicator now we can use some sort of oscillator indicator maybe um RSI or MACD or stochastic oscillator. And then what we want to see is we want to see that price is approaching the overs in because we're looking for sell opportunity here. We want to see that price approaching the oversold conditions, okay, or overbought conditions. So let's just uh let's add the oscillator. Um you can find this on your MT4, by the way. Um, so let's just maybe do the RSI relative strength index. Oh, so I need to log into my uh Oh shit! I don't even know why I'm not logged into my trading view. I don't know if I should quickly do that. So, okay, let's see. Let me delete this and see if I can add another one. Okay, so oh, it doesn't allow. Okay, so um, just give me a moment. Pause. Zoom back again. Okay, so I'm logged in back into um my profile so I, at least I can use uh, some of the tools here. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so let's go, what's going on? Okay, so now we're, we're back to where we were. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so we just pull in, uh, just kind of like draw back in uh, Fibonacci just to have the same feel. Uh, that I was talking about. So remember, we're only looking for, we're only looking, first of all, the first thing we want to see is that price is uh, within the 618 Fibonacci retracement area. So this is my normal default. Uh, so let me just call it, uh, this is my personal. So I can, okay, so I'll just redo this so I can show. Basically, let it show 618, okay? So anything within 618 is fine. Otherwise, we're not interested, okay? So this, yeah, this makes it easier, right? So you can see here um, that if price gets to 618, then we begin, then, then and only then can we um, justifiably look for opportunities to get involved in the trade depending on the market direction. So um, in this case, price, First of all, you can see we had the, this is where we had the break of structure confirming bearishness. Anyway, this is not just what's, it's the same thing with bearishness confirmation. So you can use confluence in everywhere, right? Um, the market shifted bearish. Uh, obviously, there's, you can look for more confluence to identify that break. But nonetheless, let's just take it at that. The market has shifted bearish. And then we said, so we're looking for selling opportunities. And we wait for price to retrace to at least the 618. And then if we get that retracement, when price gets to at least the 618, then we can begin to look for other opportunities to get involved. Now, um, because of confluence, we need some other reason to get involved. So let's let's actually look for the RSI indicator, right? So the relative um uh relative strength index. We can use anything, we can use stochastic oscillator, uh, MACD. You know, basically, I'm just trying to help you grasp the concepts here. Okay, so I've added that to my chats. Um Let's see, does the RSI do us justice? No, it doesn't really do us justice. So let's, let's maybe add uh, stochastic. 
I need something that's parabolic with prime. Yes, right. So in this case here, right now, um, now in this case here, so you have price a shifted bearish. Um, the price that market has retraced, right? Made a retracement to the six one eight at least, and then you want to see that the stochastic oscillator or and whatever oscillator you're choosing has spiked up at least within seventy to eighty. Uh, on your on your as you can see here on your view, and then what you can then use that is as a confirmation to to sell. Now, because this is a um. Because this is a daily chart, obviously it will take a number of days for you know a setup like this to transpire. But this is simply an example in confluence using indicators alone. Now you can use you can add multiple indicators. Now my advice would be, you know, when looking for confluence, don't let it not exceed anything between three, between two, and four, right? Four is probably stretching it. Um, maybe two and three, uh, not one. One is too little. Um, two is probably a little, um, three is okay, four is okay. If anything between five and six and above, you will struggle to find positions because, you know, waiting for a lot of things to align. But before you even get to that point, you want to back test. You want to scroll back in the chat and see how price has reacted based on the conditions you are looking at. That is how you build a system, okay? So basically, Prices has retraced to the 618, right? The market is showing, you know, has spiked up. It's showing that prices are putting the overbought um, region in a bearish market. And then what you can then do is look to go into a market because your, because your trades, your confirmation has been met. You can say, well, this is a good enough reason for me to get involved in a trade at the close of that candle. I'll sell and then I'll put my stop loss above the high and I'll put my take profits, let's say one is to two or at the low of the candle, okay? And in this case, the price goes on to hit your target. This is fine, all good, and you're good to go. Now, again, price moves on. We try and do the same thing over and over again, right? Right? And then we say, well, what is this market doing, right? So the market is making lower lows and lower highs. So let me change the color of this so we can see it. Uh, so... Price is making lower lows and lower highs and lower lows and lower highs and lower lows and lower highs. However, look at this lower high, right? If we pull out our Fibonacci retracement too, where is that? And we draw from this high to this low, notice how price did not get to the 618. So what this means for us then is that we don't take this trade. So there's no trades to be taken here, right? Same thing here, no trade to be taken here. Now look at this, even if the price actually, you know, even if price, you can see that the price did not get to the 618, also the stochastic oscillator here is not heading up towards this area. So both of our confluences do not tell us to take a trade, right? So we continue to proceed. In the same case, price went from this high to this low, right? If you pull out your Fibonacci, if you draw your, if you use your Fibonacci retracement too, and you go from, uh, what you call it, and you go from uh, high to low here, you can see that this does not get to the 618 either, right? <clears throat> and since it doesn't, there's no trade to be taken, right? Now, obviously, in this case, let's say if you've taken a trade like this, a sell. So notice how we did not get involved in a trade here because our, our, conf our confluence or our confirmation was not met. However, here, we also did not get involved in a trade because our confirmation is not met. And if you had gotten involved in a trade, well, you'd have had something like this, where your stop losses at this, maybe something like this, and you're going after one is to two. So notice how our confluence has kept us out of this trade. So yes, we don't take certain trades, but it will also help, it will also help prevent us from taking lots of unnecessary trades. Now, notice what happened. Um, the market begins to, change, begins to change structure, right? And the market goes from being bearish to being bullish and then breaks again, uh, you know, basically. So if we're looking for multiple breaks, then, you know, looking for something like this makes a lot of sense. But we're just going to take one break. You just keep it quite simple. Okay. So the market has shifted from being bearish to shift to being bullish. And then what, what do we do? Well, we do the same thing again, right? Now notice how our decision to buy or sell is not dependent on, you know, what we feel or what the candles is doing. Or, you know, if we're having a strong, uh, if the news is coming out, it doesn't really, we don't really care about it. 
we're following a set of rules and we're looking for setting confirmation to confirm our direction. Now, the market is now bullish. So right now, we're no longer looking for selling opportunity. We're looking for buying opportunity. So we go from pull out our Fibonacci. As price has made a new high, draw from low to high. And we want to see price pull back into the 618 Fibonacci retracement area. Now, in this case, you can see price pulled back into the 618, right? Quite nicely, this was the deepest point and then continue to move. So in this particular example here, if we've drawn our FIB using our specific rules, we would have also looked at our stochastic oscillator here. So notice how, for instance, here, yes, price is, it's, this is the 618 line, this line here. So let me, I think, let me use this. So this white line that I'm about to draw is the six Fibonacci 61.811, this white line here, right? Um, hope you guys can see it. However, that means as the moment price taps into this area, we can begin to look for buying opportunity because we're bullish. However, look at the second, um, look at the second um, confluence that we're, or confirmation that we're looking at here. Now, in this case, look at where the stochastic is. Yes, it has gone down, right? It has gone down. Um, it's approaching the lower level, lower band, uh, but not really. It hasn't really approached the lower band. Now, if you had gotten involved in a trade like this. This will be a buy trade in this case. They've gotten involved in a trade like this, you know, from this um area here. Your stop loss obviously you'd have put below this low, and then you'd have gone after one is to two or something like that, or go after gone after this high here. Uh, so let's just say we're going after one is to two, just to keep it consistent. Yeah, you'd have made uh profits here, uh, but you can see that your risk is much bigger, like your risk is much bigger. Um, however, just by waiting for our confirmation, our second confirmation, waiting for price to get, you know, the arrow side to get deeper, you can see here that in this particular area here, the condition one is still met because price has obviously tapped into the 618. It's still within that 618 region. And then you can see that our stochastic oscillator here is showing that price is over, you know, oversold basically. And we have two things. So two things are aligning. And that can make for a strong um, confirmation that we can then use to take a trade. So in this case, instead of taking a trade here, we, we would not take a trade because the second confirmation wasn't met. Instead, we'll probably be taking our first trade at this point where the next confirmation was met. So in this case, if we're going after, um, you see how we're, we're, having, we're getting involved at a better price. And if we're going after this high, instead of making two, um, two uh, RR, we'll probably make three, uh, our risk to reward will be three is to or one is to three in this case. So this is a very simple but very powerful um, use case um, for explaining confluence as to trading confluence in regards to using indicators. So we're just simply using the Fibonacci retracement tool and using the stochastic oscillator as a simple two-step verification to get involved in a trade. Okay, so um, like I promised you, I was going to talk about uh, one with regards to uh, price action and one with regards to indicators. So we just round it up with indicators. We're going to still go over the same price, uh, the same price action here on GBP USD, uh, this same area here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for trade opportunity using um, candlestick, basic candlestick price action. Okay, so uh, let's uh, just undo some of this. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to, uh, what was that? Um, nope. Where is my chats? Let's collapse you a little bit and let's bring you forward. Okay, so uh, where is my RSI? Mm. No, we, I think we use stochastic. Let's see. Okay. Oh my. Not the right one. Let's undo. Okay, yeah, good. Um, and just delete all of this. Okay, now so what? We don't need this stochastic anymore because we're not using it, right? We're still basically using the same understanding with regards to market structure. So here, price broke down. Price broke down here, like so. It broke bearish, right? And we decide this is a good enough reason for us to get involved in the trade. The move came from this high down to this low. So that's the range that we're playing around with. And so we want to look for selling opportunity because we understand that this market is most likely going to uh, be bearish. So we ask ourselves, how do we get involved based on price action? Now, obviously, price action traders, we simply 
tend to look for, uh, tend to uh, utilize the market movement as our confirmation. So if you have an understanding of other blocks, you know, let's say smart money, uh, SMC space, um, or let's say you, 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 you have an understanding with regards to imbalance. In my last class, I discussed something with regards to imbalance. You can use that as a trading setup. You can also have a, you know, a mixture, a hybrid between, um, you know, price action slash indicator where you use, you know, for instance, we can still use our Fibonacci retracement confirm uh, condition here, right? So we can still say, well, if price retraces into the six one eight Fibonacci level, I want to look for buy opportunity, right? But on the, on the other hand, instead of waiting to use another indicator to confirm, we can then use price action to confirm, okay? So let's say in this particular instance here, we still use the Fibonacci retracement because I don't want to have to start using other blocks or imbalances because that will mean I have to explain an entirely different concept to some of you, to some persons who don't already know that. So remember, I have classes on imbalances, other blocks, the SMC space on the Anzo Training Hub uh, down the here in the channel, and you can also just take advantage of that. Okay. So now, um, if price gets into our region, now, with regards to confirmation using price action, this is where you can now use another concept that I teach you guys here, which is the MTFA. That is a multi-time frame analysis. So multi-time frame analysis is a situation where you, you analyze the markets on one time frame, but then you look for entries on another time frame. So let's say in this particular case, we're, looking, we're analyzing markets on the daily charts. However, we look for entries on the, let's say, one hour or four hour chart. So let's... So we've seen that the market is bearish. We have pulled back into the 618 Fibonacci area. Let's drop down to the four hours. Let's see. Um, I don't know if it's to take us far back with the one hour. So let me zoom out a um, little bit. Okay, so the four hour is good. We can go back as much as there. Okay. And so this is so this is still the daily structure, right? This um this this is still the daily range, right? Forget, don't bother about yourself the fact that within the daily range, there's also a four hour it's range, right? So, but this is the daily range. We understand that. Now, what we want to do on the on the on the lower time frame is to look for further confirmation. Now, further confirmation can be something as simple as a counter trend line break, right? So, counter trend line, you know what trend lines are. So, the, this for, so for instance, in this particular instance here, there is a bearish trend line like so. Right, there is a bearish trend line. You can draw in a number of ways, um, like so. Right. However, there is, you know, within if you zoom into this pushback here, there is a counter trend where the market is pushing higher. So what I mean by counter trend is it's a trend against the overall structure. Remember, we know that this market is bearish. However, this move here is bullish, right? So this move here is against the trend, hence the name counter trend. So once we've identified, we've seen that price has gotten to our 618 level, then it means we can now look for a counter trend line break on our time frame of entry. Let's say in this case, our time frame of entry is the four hour chart. You can just simply draw the clearest trend line that we see. So in this case, this is the clearest trend line that I see here, and just simply wait for it to break. So price has pushed up into the 618, right? So you can see that price has pushed up into the 618 FIB area. We draw our line. So remember, we're drawing this uh, our trend line before price makes a move, because there's a probability price just continues to go up, in which case we don't get involved in a trade, and we also don't get involved in a loss, right? However, we wait for conf another confirmation by watch one, um, waiting for price to break below the trend line. It seems we're looking for selling opportunities here. And this is where we had that trend line break. Now you can even add it a step further and say the price break below. So if we have a trend line, so this in this case, we have a bearish break. So let me draw. So in this case, we have a trend line like so. I was saying if the market breaks the trend line, we want to make, maybe see a retest of the trend line and sell from there. Otherwise, you can see if the market breaks the trend line, I'll sell from there, put my stop loss above the high, and then take, put my take profit one is to two or at the next low. Okay, so in this case, we'll just keep it simple as once the trend line is broken, we'll take a trade at, after the close of the candle that, that broke below the trend line, put our stop loss above the overall um, daily or uh, highs or daily lows, uh, or sometimes depending on you, obviously this will depend on your own back test. You can put it above the four hour structure high. So in this case, this will be the trade that we take. This is where the market 
close below, we can keep our stop loss above at this high or at this high, depending on you. There is advantage and disadvantage to both. The advantage to doing something like this is you gain, you know, if you're right, you make more RR. But the disadvantage is, well, this is the actual daily range. So it's possible that price might do something like this, pull up, and then continue going down, in which case it will take you out for a loss and then continue going down. So you decide what works best for you based on your own back testing. And in this case, this will take this is where we take our first trade. Okay. So we take our one is to two. We are out of the trade. So this is where our one is to two is met. We're out of the trade and we move further. Now remember, we are looking at our time frame of, of analysis is the daily chart, right? So we're, we're on basically our structural leg, that's the higher highs and the higher lows, or the lower highs and the lower lows, is gotten from the daily chart. So in the same thing here, if you um look at this range here, so I'll just drag this. I'll drag this. This would be the new high, and this would be the new um, low here. However, if you also take your Fibonacci tool and place it across it like so, like so, you see that price did not pull back to the 618. So in this case, there's no trade for us to take, right? Same thing here. You could price it obviously if I you know you don't need me to draw it, but you can see that price also did not pull back to the 618 here. So it means no trades to be taken here as well. Okay. Uh, because price never got there, so there was no sell trade. However, at this point, we broke above. So we made a structural break, we made a lower low, and then we're making lower lows and lower highs. And then for the first time, we made a break to the upside. So we made a break, a higher high. Right. So not naturally, you might want to wait for another break to confirm. But let's just like we did in the first case, just continue to progress. So we've seen this break. We are, we're, we're now saying, OK, this market is no longer bearish. It's now bullish. First thing we want to see is we draw our Fibonacci from low to high and wait for uh, and basically wait for uh, what you call it. Uh, we wait for price to make uh, the pullback to the 618. Okay, so we get the pullback to the 618 here. Remember, now we're looking for confirmation, right? So what 